Okay, y'all. So let's talk a little bit about um, the steps one and two because um, I think I've seen where the where the problem may have come in when we were doing it, or part of the problem anyway, with the first um, case that we did. And that's because of the horrible way question one is worded here because it's 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 so general okay that you think well um, I'm just gonna pick all sorts of steps or issues and forgetting that we need to pay attention to our case all right so the goal of the case is should always be at the forefront of your mind so you're either at Rainer High School or Cold Springs Middle School and your principal has sent you and a colleague on the leadership team to a workshop and you've learned all about differentiated instruction and you're all excited when you come back because you know this is something that could be so beneficial for a whole bunch of students for all of our students if we do it correctly and then that's the task how do we do that correctly so um, if I go back here if I can find the master disk to the intro page where it talks about the case and scroll down it says your task so oh bingo bingo what I need to pay attention to is to identify the primary issues issue or issues there might just be one I don't know that needs to be addressed and the action steps to take in order to introduce differentiated instruction within the school. So that's what you need to keep in mind. Your task, you want to identify the primary issues that need to be addressed, and what action steps do you need to take to address those or that issue that will help you introduce differentiated instruction into the school. Alright? So if we go then to step one, which you were working on and now that you've gotten feedback from the first case and hopefully everyone got my message that I sent um, kind of giving some examples of how maybe to approach question one that you might want to go back and rework this and that's perfectly fine that's why we're revisiting it here too okay so with decision making step one again pop-ups need to be allowed for on your browser so that you get this message right here. The school site is open in another window because that's all the information you need about your school. Okay. So you, you read down through here your step one decision making. We need to identify the issues. Kind of tells us what to do. Um, consider many possible explanations, um, including assumptions within each. Um, you need to just underlying nature of the problem, um, data to help you say, yep, that is a problem. And then we're going to identify the goal and any other data needed and team and all that stuff. Okay. So question one says, consider what is going on at the school. Generate three to five explanations that you think could account for this. And check the one that you believe is at the heart of the issue. Okay. You read that. Doesn't say anything about differentiated instruction. And so if you're not keeping that focus of the case, at the forefront of your mind, then when you read that, you can just start picking information about anything. And um, that's kind of where we stumbled, or where we've been stumbling on this. And I under, you know, I get that. Now that I look at it a little closer after looking at the feedback and stuff, or giving feedback and looking at what you submitted. Oh, yes. Ding, ding, there's a problem right there. Okay, so. As you're going into these steps, the questions are going to be general because they're used in more than one case. So they wanted them to be questions that would, you know, kind of go with any kind of a leadership situation. But wanting you to keep your focus on the problem that they presented at the beginning. Okay, so when it says consider what is going on at the school, it means consider what is going on at the school with respect to, in this case, differentiated instruction. And then give three to five explanations, not facts or pieces of information, but explanations that you think could account for this. OK? 
Okay. And then you're going to check the one that you believe is at the heart of the issue. And again, there's there's no right or wrong answer on these. So when I sent ex the example yesterday for the generate three to five explanations, one of them I gave, um, especially when we were thinking about differentiated instruction, is um, there is a need for differentiation in the classrooms. And then I went on and substantiated that with data, which I said I made up, um, but you're going to use the data from the school, saying, you know, 37% of students have been identified as um, having special needs or on an IEP or, you know, with a, a, a learning plan, that kind of stuff. Um, talked about how many are gifted students because we need to keep them in mind too and that the school's mission says we're going to educate everybody but how are we doing that if we're not you know kind of meeting everybody's needs um, another one might be you know, about teachers needing training in alternate alternative pedagogy and then you substantiate that with data okay? so you make a you make a statement on, on an issue that could that you know, makes this a problem, why is differentiation? Why is introducing differentiated instruction a problem? And then you say, and you, then you substantiate that with information from the case, from the school's data. Okay. And once you've got three to five, then you say, okay, which one of those do I think is at the heart of this whole issue, and that I want to tackle? take action on as we go through this process. So the issue, this you know, student data driven issue that you decide is the heart of this whole thing okay, is what's going to drive your goal and you're working with the mission and the vision and the dispositions and your action alternatives and then finally your plan at the end of decision in step four. Okay. So then in question two it says identify eight key data sources that led you to conclude what the heart of the issue is. And remember, we're talking about differentiating instruction. So what's important to look at when gathering data to help you make decisions about differentiating instruction? So it's going to be a little different maybe than what you looked at for the, the TPAC part, the technology pedagogy, and that's okay. You can look at more than eight, but you need to identify at least eight. And you can use both the school site and the intranet, which talks about things, you know, outside the school, um, more demographic information and that kind of thing. All right. Then, okay, in addressing this issue, this issue is the one that you identified in question one as being the heart of the matter. Identify desired goals you want to achieve. Goals need to be statements that say, here's what I want to do, when I want to do it. Okay. Um, so if our issue is that um, we need differentiated instruction in, the, in our classes, then a goal might be um, our school will implement a differentiated instruction model in all core classes by the end of this academic school year. Or it may be if you're focusing on teachers, um, our school, it doesn't have to start with our school, that's just what's coming to my head right now. Um, we will implement a series of professional development or we will implement a professional development initiative focusing on differentiated instruction that will begin um, at the beginning of the school year and be built in incrementally throughout this academic year and will be fully implemented by next year something of that nature so you know goal a goal what do you want to do okay all right, and then questions five and six, you know, 
when I when you look at those, that's just you know. Well, okay, okay. So you, we've got certainty, or I like, get it, kind of thing. And you might not, and that's okay. All right, we're still working through this. Okay, so that's step one. I know I'm talking a lot. I apologize, but I know we need some some guidance here. Um, then step two, what are your guiding principles? Now, when you get to question one, make sure that when you're talking about this, that, you know, how will the goals and the mission serve you? So, you need to look at the goals of the school, obviously, and the mission, and think about them in terms of differentiated instruction, and explain how those are going to serve as a criteria for when you're making your decision. Um, so, why are they important? What's the big deal? Who cares? Basically, so what? So this is the mission. So what? What does that mean for you, for differentiated instruction and you fulfilling the goal that you set in step one? All right. Most of us did really great with choosing the dispositions that um, and the and the professional knowledge that are going to kind of help you with the decision. Okay. Very subjective. Everybody had a different idea, and everybody was able to substantiate that, but make sure that as we substantiate the disposition we've chosen, that we're choosing the dispositions based on our case differentiated instruction, and then that we're explaining okay, how that's going to um, be a criteria for decision making. Why is it important? So what? That's the big thing to keep in mind in this section too, as you're explaining, the, the so what. Yes, it's true that, you know, the, in the mission, we want to make uh, everybody a lifelong learner. We want people to be lifelong learners. And we can make a general statement of it's important that everybody learns throughout their lifetime. But that's not specific to our case in our school. So you need to take that and make it specific to your case in your school when you're explaining. All right. So that's steps one and step two. And I'm going to go ahead in this video, even though I know I'm getting a little long, and go on with step three and four as well. Because I just think it's important. Okay. So, this is where we did alternatives. Ideas for action. So, what are we going to, what do we want to do to implement or to achieve our goal, basically? So, what, we want to make this a logic chain. We've identified some issues and decided which one is at the heart of the matter. We've taken that issue and we've written a goal based on that issue. What do we want to do to make differentiated instruction happen in this school? Okay. Then we've talked about, okay, the mission and goals of the school should drive our decision making. I mean, that's what we're all about. If the mission and goals are written correctly in our, in our um, those are really the roadmaps for our schools and our and our school districts. So those are, we need to keep those in mind as we make decisions. So you determine, okay, here's what the mission goals say, and here's why that's important as we make decisions about differentiated instruction. Okay, so you've got your issue, you've got your goal, you, you've got your driving direction, and now it's time to start brainstorming ideas for putting action to that goal. That's what you want to do here. You want to have two alternatives. Two different alternatives. And we want them to be different because, you know, as we think of one, we're going to think of something pretty similar, but how does that change anything? Um, how does that help? How does that make us kind of think outside our comfort zone um, and really um, stir things up, mix things up a little bit so that what we're doing can really um, bring in the element that, that we, so we can be change agents, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so you've got your alternative. You describe one. And then you've got your enablers and your constraints. This means, enablers, what's there already in your school based on the data that's, that could make your first alternative possible? 
Why is that maybe a good idea? Is it because you've got great community support? Is it because you've got technology in place? Is it because you've got teachers who are excited about, you know, learning new things and trying them in their classrooms? So looking at the data from the school, what's going to enable you to carry out this plan of action? Now, with enablers, we've always got constraints. Things are going to keep us from doing that. And when we're talking about technology, pedagogy in the last case, a lot of you talked about budget constraints. Definitely. Um, there. Always. We wish it wasn't, but it is. Okay. So that's a, that's a constraint. Something that's going to keep you from implementing this change. Perhaps you've got um, teachers who have been teaching for a long, long time and you know they're just very resistant to change. Or um, the structure of your, your schedule, the way classes are schedule, scheduled, don't allow for collaboration and crossing disciplines to help make that differentiation maybe um, a more a group or a team effort. Okay, so, so what are the constraints? What is going to hold you back from achieving your goal? So you've got your goal, you've got your roadmap with the mission and everything. You said, okay, so one alternative is to do this. Here's why it could work. Here's what might hold us back. Then you've got a second alternative for the meeting the same goal. Again, differentiated instruction is the goal. So what's your second alternative? Try to make it different than um, your first one. Try to make it different maybe than anything you've thought of before. There's nothing that says you can't go out and search for ways other people have done differentiated instruction and say, oh, that's a really good idea. I think that might work for this case. And then you, you know, kind of put that idea in here, but then you've got to be able to substantiate that with your enablers and your constraints from this school's actual data. So... And that might be a good exercise for this and going out and finding what other people have done okay, and saying, oh, that's really cool. That's a neat idea. I'm going to plop it in here. But then we've got to consider, ooh, will that work for my school population? I mean, do they have the same kind of kids? Do they have the same kind of uh, support and their leadership? Um, do they have more money than we do? Is that going to work? Is that feasible for us? Okay, So that's how you need to approach the kind of this step here. Here's my alternatives. And you don't have, to, I mean, like I said, don't reinvent the wheel, like I've just been saying. If you find other ideas somewhere, plug them in and see if they work for this school. If they work, great. All right. And then you got your, your start, how you how you doing here. All right. And then the final, final step is step four, the decision-making process. Okay. And then the decision-making process for question one, it's going to bring in those two alternatives that you came up with, and it's going to say, which one do you want to focus on as your plan of action? And so you choose that one, and then from there, now you're going to, you're going to, um, sorry, I'm wiggly, say, this is, the, this is the, how is it going to happen? Who's going to do it? How are you going to get everybody on board with this? All right. So when you set directions, how are you going to um, kind of bring everybody on board your boat? What are you going to do? And how are you going to gauge progress towards your goal and towards meeting this action plan? How are you going to make sure that you're still going in the right direction. Now, here's where we're starting. Here's why we're starting. Here's what we're going to do. And here's how we're going to make sure that it keeps going that way. So that's what this is for. You want to make sure that in all of these, um, when you're setting direction and developing people and developing your organization, that you give multiple strategies for doing this because one might backfire. And you need to have more than kind of, you know, one possibility in mind as we're working through. A lot of you did that. Um, a lot of you were kind of general. This is where we need to be specific. This is where we're doing our action plan. 
Okay, so be really specific and detailed as you're working through these. All right. Then, as we're developing people, how are we gonna how are we gonna get the teachers to do this? How are we gonna get the administration to support this idea? How are we gonna get the community on board, the parents on board? How are we gonna get the students to understand what we're doing? All right. So, what are we doing here to to make people? be part of our plan. All right. And then finally is that developing the organization. And this also is a, you know, what are our incentives? What are we um, doing so that all our stakeholders are still moving in our direction? And then, you know, that's this school board, superintendent, community, business leaders. This is this is the whole school organization. Bus drivers, cafeteria workers, janitors, secretaries, principal, everybody. Okay. So what's going to make the organization work to help you achieve movement in this direction? Where are we, go and where are we going with the whole thing? So, you know, be specific. Give details. How, who, what, when, where. Okay. This, these sections here are not so much the why. Because we've, in, in, this, in this last step. Because we've established all the why in steps one, two, and three. You know, why is this an issue? What's the goal? Uh, why are we working towards this goal? What alternatives have we come up with? And why will they or won't work? They might not work. And after you've looked at all that, now we decide, okay, this is the most feasible. This is the best idea right now with all the data that I have. This is what I'm going to do. And this is now in this step four, this is how I'm going to do it. So that's where we're at, how we're going to do it. And then when you're all done with everything, make sure you go down here and you click Submit. Because until you click Submit and the little, you'll get a dialog box that says, are you sure you want to submit your answers? Because once you submit your answers, you can't make any changes. And you say yes. As long as you don't hit Submit, you can come back and, and change and alter, alter and edit as much as you need to. Once you hit Submit, it's a it's through to be assessed and to see the rubric there is a scoring criteria and it, it tells you okay here's the rubric so as you look through that you can see what I'll be looking at as I'm grading and assessing what you've done okay. so once you're done Listening, um, pausing, re-listening, listening for peace as you're working on one section, however you use this. Um, if you have questions, let me know. And we will use this case as a next step in getting better at this process of using data and research to drive our decisions.